I've got this strong idea that geography creates culture. In a way, we think we're above our surroundings. Again, therefore, we think our culture is our culture, and, but not realising how strongly it comes from the geography that we're in. So in relationship to culture and water, in Australia, we have a really particular geography, and it, therefore, it creates a really particular culture. In terms of particularly Western Sydney, people's come from you know, all the countries of the world just about with their all cultural takes of water. Vietnamese, Malaysian, African, Iraqi, Afghani, Iranian. There's something like well over 200 cultures in Western Sydney and that's an amazing mix of people coming together on the landscape. So one of the challenges that we have to address is how all these cultural perspectives come together. There's all sorts of different permutations and variations in the way each culture relates to water. Aboriginal people, Anglo-Irish people, Vietnamese, Arab Australians. But for all of them, water is an important part of people's everyday lives. It's often an important part of people's spiritual lives. <laughs> Aboriginal people, even today, understand um, the countryside by thinking about the waterholes and the rivers. Once you start appreciating the, the cultures which relate to water of the people who've come into Australia and become Australians, then I think you can draw on those to build a much more attentive society to think about water and look after it, as well as to share it with other people. I'm Fran Bodkin. I'm a descendant of the Darawa people. I belonged to the clans of the Bidigal, who were the swamp walkers. We were the experts in living in swamps and protecting ourselves with the swamps. And wherever there were swamps, we were there. The water was our, it was our lifeblood, actually. Um, it, it wasn't just for drinking, it was for medicines. And different swamp waters have different properties. The saltwater swamps have a different property to the bitter water swamps. There's also the freshwater swamps. This is the bitter water swamp. And the bitter water is water that virtually flows over the plains. And it takes within it all the rotting vegetation and the medicinal qualities of that vegetation is in the water. And that water was used for healing, it was used for medicine, it was used for cooking, and it was used for ceremony. And we had ceremonies that actually respected the water. And all of our rivers, and even these lakes, are guarded by a mermaid. The mermaid keeps the waters clean. The mermaid makes sure there's always plenty of fish there and she has a taste for men who disobey the law. All of those stories just show the importance of water and the importance of obeying the rules of the water.
This is Ruby Felmy Lakes. This, we've had estimates of the ages of them of about 220,000 years. I can remember the place first when I was about three years old. Then I was taken away for a while from mum and dad and um, went to live with foster parents. And then when I came back, um, we came down here frequently until mum died. And I've been coming down ever since. Why the water is so dark? It contains a high amount of tannin, which is really good for skin rashes. Most of the plants here are medicine plants and they depend on the water from these lakes, which depend on the water from the aquifers, which are no longer coming down. Unfortunately, there's so much water mining going on by bottled water companies that they have taken the water away from the lakes. So we can buy it in little plastic bottles that are poisonous to us. And, you know, we, we need to look after our swamps. To me, water is the spirit of our life. It is the spirit of our land, and it is the spirit of this planet. It's the only planet with water on. That's why we're here. The water is almost, almost, almost everywhere in the Mandaian religion and culture. And specifically, baptism is the centerpiece of Mandaian religion. عند دخوله في الماء الجاري وخروجه من الماء من حوض الجاري يعتبر كخلاص من الخطايا. شبنهم شبن الها أنا كسي تربت قد ميت هي من الدين يبتبي تبكسي هبلون هي كسي يروبي قد ما يشوفه من زكين تدري شو بات اللي عاوز يوقام شو بلاخ ما نربي كبيرة خل عامل يمين أو اسمه المار دي مار دي مال فروبان. إحنا أنا جينا إحنا اليوم سوينا طقوس دينية إلي والبتي لأنه بداية تعميد طفلة عمرها ست أسابيع وهي بداية دخولها للمندائية نحسبها وهذا الشيء يعتبر بالنسبة لي شيء حدث كلش مهم لأنه أنا بتي عمرها ست أسابيع. يقرأون داعي إبراهيم من يقوم وهذا بوث نبي وهذا قيمة تاني قيمة زود تبيدون ما قيمة تاني قيمة ستة سبلا دا سبلا متون هي قد قائم قيمة تون ملل الوثة هي رب ملل الوثة هي رب الزيوت ناش We can regard it as a new creation spiritually new creation and the new birth. We get peace and life and purity. That's the main things we, we get it through baptism. Peace and life and love. Absolutely. <laughs> they are here on Sundays, they are happy.
It's a very, very uh, significant thing, water. In the Quran, it says that water was actually made before the heavens. So um, water is a very, very, very sacred part of this earth. It's an essential part of a Muslim person's life. We use water five times a day to make our wash before we pray. So you're making your ablution, you're washing your hands, washing your arms, your face, your hair, your feet. And we believe that every drop of water that runs off your fingertips, it's, it's like a sign of a, a sin falling away from you. I've grown up in Picnic Point, so I lived here my whole life. I personally feel like I've got an attachment here to the Georges River, to this park. Believe it or not, we actually have swum in this river. <laughs> um, we go fishing here. In the month of Ramadan, when we do our fasting, we used to come and break our fast down here. So not only do we have a religious connection to the water, but it's also a cultural connection as well. A lot of our fam a lot of my family background uh, come from port cities. And I guess that's probably a reason why, why I found to be close to water or close to the Georges River. It's probably that it's the background um, and the family. People don't intentionally come here to mingle with other people from the suburb or, you know, from different cultures, but they do it without realising. You know, the last time we had a barbecue, we had a couple of people join us from the park and, and try our sausages and our, you know, and our eggs. They really like them. It brings people together. If you're sharing the same open space and the same river, well, what's going to stop you from talking to each other? It's beautiful. And we go fishing. We'll have a man from Asian background, a man from Lebanese background, we have an Anglo. Man. We've got quite a few, actually, Aboriginals that live around here. We'll get a few, we'll do a bit of fishing, and we all start talking. It breaks down those sort of areas, whereas, or if you're in your own community, you, you mingle with people from that only one religion or one culture, this sort of allows you to open up you know, without realising it. So, that's one reason why we come here. It's, it's good, we, we open people up to see, look, this is, this is our culture, this is our religion, we're normal. We're like everyone else. You know, the, the park, when I come here and I walk down mornings and afternoons, you meet the locals and you see people from all walks of life walking on the edge of the water, the walking, and everyone is so comfortably connecting. And I think to me, as a, as a Muslim woman and an Australian Muslim woman, I look at it and I see water around us is, is in fact should give us that space and that, that awareness of getting to know each other and, and not to be, in a way, wanting to change each other. My spiritual connection, it does go, go back to, to water as the base. You know, it is the foundation of every creation that's been created on Earth. And I think, in a way, um, we consider ourselves very, very lucky to be able to just sit here and, and enjoy the scenery where you realise many people have water around them, but they can't even drink it. And they can't even enjoy even watching it or even swimming in it. I, I think just the, the fact that you can actually sit here and ponder and reflect on the unknown that is beneath the water itself is, a, is an amazing um, spiritual connection.
floor Make my break for your back door And I'm getting out of here I used to think I wanted this Now I'm not so sure Could have sworn I wanted this I'm running out your door Your door 